Hello everyone and welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We're glad you're tuned in. We want to give a shout out to our friends at Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and the Dove Network. Thank you for hosting us on your station. In the Medford School District, we have one shared vision and that we believe that all are learning and learning is for all. And what better place to do that than right here on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Hi, I'm Jody Smith with Washington Elementary. And I'm Angela Whitehead with Washington Elementary. And we're gonna have some fun with science today. Let's take a look at our learning target. We're gonna specifically look at states of matter. We can investigate and describe how states of matter change as they interact. The three states of matter are listed here. We have solids, which you know a lot about solids. It keeps its definite size and it retains its own shape like an ice cube. Now when that melts, of course, we have liquid. Liquid has definite volume and it takes on the shape of its container. Then we have gas that's less visible. It has no definite shape and it takes on the shape and fills its container. So we're gonna explore more with gas. And here's Angela to show you an experiment with air and balloons. Hi everybody. So as you see in front of me, I have an empty water bottle with a balloon on top. I have a cup of ice cold water, and then I have a thermos of warm water. And we are gonna see what happens um, to the bottle and the balloon when I dunk it in cold water and when I dunk it in warm water. What do you think is gonna happen when I do this? So first, I'm going to dip my bottle in hot water. Watch the balloon carefully. What is happening right now? I see the warm air as, ex well I can't see it, but the warm air in the bottle is expanding, which is causing the balloon to fill up. Warm air needs more space than cold air. Now let's see what happens if I take the same bottle and I dunk it in the cold water. As you can see, the air immediately went out of the balloon. Cold air takes up less space, causing the balloon to deflate very quickly. And now we're going back to Ms. Smith for another balloon experiment involving gas. So we're going to mix some different states of matter today, and we're gonna see if we can blow up a balloon even bigger than Mrs. Whitehead did with gas. So first, we're going to take a liquid. So I have some apple cider vinegar. You can use any kind of vinegar for this, but I'm going to pour a cup of vinegar into this empty water bottle. So that's going to be my liquid, and it's actually an acid. So we're hoping it will help produce a gas. So we're gonna pour our liquid into the empty water bottle. And then we have a solid. Even though this is powdery, it is still a solid. So we're going to use some teaspoons of baking so soda, but we're going to put it into the balloon. So right here, I'm gonna use a funnel again, and I'm going to use that funnel to get that baking soda down into my balloon. I'm going to put one. two, and I'm gonna do three teaspoons, really hoping that some gas will be produced when I mix these together. There's my solid inside the balloon. There's my liquid, so I have my base, my acid, and I'm going to see what happens when these mix together. So I'm going to take my balloon and carefully, I don't want my, them to mix yet, so I'm carefully putting my balloon over the top so that it's secure. And now that I know it's secure, I'm going to carefully put, what is happening now? Do you see the gas forming? There's a lot of bubbles and it's blowing up the balloon, pushing the gas out of the bottle even some of the mixture is in the balloon. Now there's a way you can blow up balloons without using the air from your mouth and your body. So as you can see, we used our solid baking soda 
are liquid vinegar and produced a gas called carbon dioxide. Did you know you could change states of matter and make ice cream in a bag? You can, and we're going to show you how. Are you ready, Mrs. Whitehead? I'm ready. First, you need one cup of half and half. You can even use whole milk or whole heavy whipping cream, and it's going to go into a small Ziploc bag. So I have my cup of half and half in my small Ziploc baggie. And now you're going to add vanilla, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla for vanilla ice cream. And you can change up the flavor and add chocolate syrup instead, but vanilla ice cream is what we're trying here. Then in the bag, we need some sugar. We need one tablespoon of sugar. And the next thing you're going to want to do is seal up that bag and try to get all that air out of there as much as you can. So Mrs. Whitehead's got her liquids ready to go. And now, Mrs. Whitehead, you need some salt. And you do need coarse salt for this. And we need one-fourth cup to pour it into a large Ziploc bag of ice. And then you're gonna nestle the small bag of ice cream into that large bag of ice. Zip that bag shut. And then this isn't good activity to do outside because your bag does get wet and it might leak a little bit, so it's great activity to take outside, but you're gonna want gloves or oven mitts to shake up that bag. So she's gonna put on oven mitts or hands don't freeze off, and now you're gonna wanna shake that bag and you're gonna to wanna to shake it for five to 10 minutes. So you can keep your bag upright and shake it all different kinds of ways. And if you keep on shaking, then you're gonna come out with ice cream and we're gonna show you what that looks like. And now you're gonna see what the finished ice cream looks like. So as you can see, it is hard ice cream in the bag. And let me show you by getting a spoonful. Doesn't that look delicious? Great summer treat. You should try it at home. So if you want to make ice cream in a bag at home, here are the ingredients. You need one cup of half and half whole milk or heavy whipping cream, one tablespoon of sugar, and one and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract or chocolate syrup. Then for the ice mixture, you need the bag of ice and one fourth cup of coarse salt. And then you shake it for five to 10 minutes and you've got ice cream. Now let's have some more fun with science and explore the power of magnets. I'm going to introduce you to our learning target. Magnets, we can identify cause and effect relationships while we explore the force of magnets on other objects. Let's take a look at the power of magnets in this book. The power of magnets. Chances are there's a magnet on your refrigerator. It's probably holding up a photo, a drawing, or some other piece of paper. Have you noticed that the magnet sticks to the refrigerator but not to the paper? Do you know why? This refrigerator magnet is actually pulling on the refrigerator. A magnet attracts objects with iron in them. The refrigerator door is probably made of steel, which is made from iron. Paper has no iron in it. That's why the magnet doesn't stick to it. If you ever spill a box of pins, a good way to pick them up is with a magnet. The magnet will pull the pins toward it. Most of the pins will stick to the ends or poles of the magnet. That's because the poles are the most powerful part of a magnet. Some magnets are bars. Other magnets are shaped like horseshoes. The power of a magnet is strongest at its poles whether it's a bar magnet or a horseshoe magnet. Poles and fields. A magnet has a north and a south pole. What happens if you try to touch the north pole of one magnet to the south pole of another magnet? They'll stick together. Opposite poles attract each other. Will two north poles or two south poles stick together? No, they won't. In fact, they will repel or push each other away, like poles like poles repel each other. This special force that attracts or repels is called magnetic force. A magnet's force is not just felt at its poles. A magnet creates a whole area or field of force around it. 
Do you want to see a magnetic field? Sprinkle iron filings around a magnet. The iron filings will form a pattern of lines. They show the magnetic field where the magnet's force works. The lines are closest together at the poles where the force is strongest. A magnetic field is invisible, but these iron pieces show where it is. The opposite poles, black and red, of these magnets come together. The like poles stay apart. Now that we have read some information about magnets, I'm ready to have some fun with magnets. Are you, Mrs. Smith? I'm ready. Let's do this. Me and Ms. Smith are going to work together. However, we are remaining six feet apart, and we are going to decide what things are magnetic, and we have a handy poster here to help us. We're going to be circling yes or no as we go through these objects and decide what is magnetic and what is not. So can you predict as we test the objects? Object number one, spoon. Here's my horseshoe magnet that I'm going to use to test. We have a match. Eraser. No magnetic force there. We have a little screw. The screw is definitely magnetic. And we have a paper clip. Definitely magnetic. Pencil. Not magnetic. However, nope. None of this pencil is magnetic. I thought the metal tip might. Fidget spinner. It's magnetic, but the, it's not as strong. So I'm guessing parts of it are magnetic and parts of it aren't. So there we have, yes. Toy car. No. Scissors. Oops, got the wrong thing. Scissors, not magnet there, but it's a magnet there. I have a key. This key is not magnetic. However, I think some keys might be. Which means that, that one not. must not be made of iron. We have a washer. Definitely magnetic. This book, this book is made of paper. It's not gonna stick to my magnet. And what about a penny? The penny is not magnetic. Even though it's a metal, it must not have iron in it. Ruler. I'm seeing this ruler's made of wood, so it's not gonna stick to my magnet. So we have tested some objects here, just common objects you can find at your house, and we've discovered which ones are magnetic and which ones are not. Now we're going to show you some up-close experiments with magnets. We're going to determine what can magnets really do. So I'm going to show you the first experiment right here. I'm going to take my two magnets and I'm going to see if the piece of paper that I put between them will stop them from connecting together. As you can see here, my um, magnets are holding through this piece of paper. I'm gonna try something a little thicker. So I have an eraser here. We're gonna see if the magnets will go through this eraser. And we can see that they did. They're holding on to each other through the eraser. We might even need something thicker. Will they connect through my hand? Let's see. If I put the magnets through my hand, they're falling off. They're not connecting through my hand. Now we will go to Miss Smith. Well, they actually do go through my fingers, not this thick part of my hand. Now we'll go to Miss Smith for some more experiments. Thank you, Angela. Let's try to see if we can make a paperclip levitate or float in air. So I'm going to you know, we know it's going to attach because we found out that paper clips were magnetic. But do you see as I pull away, see how it floats? As you can see from this angle, it is actually not attached to the magnet right there, but there's enough force 
to make it levitate and float when it's attached to this string. Isn't that cool? Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Your experiment got me thinking, can I make this magnet push another magnet without touching it? Mm. The power of the repel is working here as the magnet pushes the other magnet without touching, without me touching it at all. How cool was that? That was very cool, Mrs. Whitehead. We're gonna also see how the magnetic force works with iron filings. See, all of the area that's around is magnetic. That's the magnetic field. It's fun to play with magnets. Thank you, Angela, for trying those experiments. Now we're gonna bring in a special guest. Her name is Foster Grandma Pam, and she works with us at Washington, too. Welcome, Grandma Pam, to our lesson with about magnets. So we're gonna see what Grandma Pam does exploring with magnets on a pencil. And what we have are these little round magnets little round magnets like this. And they still have the sides that are tracked, positive and negative. So one side's positive and one side's negative. Those are floating magnets on a pencil. How did you do that? I'm gonna try that too. I'm gonna test and see how she's doing that. Mm, I know they stick together there. So. Oh, I'm finding out that when I make the opposite sides or I put the positives together and the negatives together, they're not sticking. And I test it when I do this. Ooh, I know that's gonna stick, so I'm turning it over. Wow, thanks for teaching me this trick, Grandma Pam. Isn't that cool? Whoa, bounced right off the top. You can make magnets float on a pencil. Wow, thank you, Grandma Pam. See, it's not magic. It's magnets. So thank you for joining us, Grandma Pam, because you were the one who brought Mystery Science Experiment, that experiment, into the classroom for us. And the kids just are enamored with it. So thank you so much for joining us today and sharing. Thank you for doing science with us today. And I just want to say thank you for watching Medford Anywhere Learning TV today. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Medford School District is a place where all are learning, and learning is for all. I'm at the school picking up my stuff. Uh, I want to wish all the teachers a happy Teacher's Day at 2020 quarantine. Miss Hopkins, you are the best teacher ever. Heart you, Rainbow, because you're a rainbow. Hi, Mrs. LaBelle. Hi, Mrs. Southmaid. I love when you read stories to us, and I like when you give us hugs. Happy Appreciation Week. I miss you. Bye. Hi, Mr. Grutel and all the other teachers at Griffin Creek, and thank you for all you do. Hi, Mrs. Bennett. I miss you, and I wish I could be in class with you today. Teacher, I like you because you're so cool, and you teach us a lot of stuff.
Teacher, I love you because you help us stand on a ball. Thank you, Misty. And this is Marcos and all the other teachers at Christmas. We can miss you guys all. And thank you for all you guys do. Bye. Thank you for doing Zoom meetings with us. Thank you, Mr. Pyle. Thank you for teaching us at school and online. I'm a shed. You're a shudder. Thank you very much, Miss Hess, for being my teacher through this very hard year. And it has been hard. But thank you for getting through it, for getting it through and just being happy and about it. And also thank you for inspiring me to work harder on the subjects that I have not yet mastered. Mac teachers are flipping great. Hola, señora de net. Gracias por traerme, que me mandaste trabajo muy fácil. Y también gracias por hacer tus videos de YouTube. Thank you for teaching us in school and online. Thank you, Miss Edwards, for being the best teacher you can. My heart is filled with happiness. You bring joy and laughter to this classroom. Congratulations of, the, of winning Teacher of the Year. Happy Teacher's Week. You're the best teacher ever. You're nice, kind, caring, awesome, and smart. I'm so thankful to all of my teachers at Logos for taking the time and putting in the effort to get online classes up for us and I miss them and I can't wait to see them again. Hey, I just want to give a shout out to my teachers and friends at McLaughlin. Wash your hands. This is where I know that you miss us and you've been working super hard for us and thank you. Mr. Blair, you're the best teacher in the universe. I miss you reading to me, playing the guitar, and birthday bombs. See you soon. One of my best days as a parent. One of my best days as a parent. One of my best days as a parent. As a parent. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best days is when my kids came home and say, Mom, I love school. She immediately comes home and she starts talking to me about, we get to go to lunch like every day. Like, <laughs> so I was like, you do that at home. But for her, it was amazing. When my son was in kindergarten and he came home from school early in the year with uh, Bob books and he sat down in my lap at night before bed and read for the first time to me and I got teary-eyed. Uh, I'll never forget it. One of my best days as a parent is when my son came home from school and said he wanted to run to be the class president for this school. And my daughter brought home this piece of artwork that says, friends help each other when they're scared. It's a friend telling her other friend, it's okay, be brave. One of my best days as a parent was the day that my son came home and said that he was chosen for a student leader award. It's, it was a really good feeling, actually, you know? Um, like a one, a one of a kind feeling, for sure. Uno de los grandes momentos también de este programa. One of the biggest moments when I came home was that I came home and I told her that um, through Bulldog Straders I had spoken to the governor of Oregon. And she was really proud of me because at a young age I had this really big opportunity. Um, and it was just so um, motivating to me like it was to her as well. My favorite thing was to hear another friend of mine that's a teacher. She asked him, so how do you like middle school? Do you like it? And he said, I love it. And I was like, what? Yes. You know, to love something, you know, school, then that makes it more fun to go to and he'll put more energy into it. I got phone calls from the school and emails from um, different newspaper people saying that my son had created something. Yeah, basically just said it just, I created a little piece off this machine that creates, you know, 3D imaging things. I, he used other words, but uh, I'm a mom and I just like was just so excited that I was like, I don't know what words you're using, but cool, I'm so proud of you. My daughter, Tiana Crick, uh, she's um, a, going into her senior year um, at South Medford High School, and uh, she was born with Down syndrome. And so one of my best days as a parent um, with Tiana 
is when she came home after her first uh, game with the Unified team. She played soccer in the fall, and, uh, and she came home just really excited. She felt like she really was playing for South Medford High School, and that I made her really happy and really proud. One of my best days as a parent is when my son won state and was able to travel to Kentucky to participate in Skills USA Nationals 2017 in mobile electronic robotics. You know, I get choked up when I think about my kids, both of them, but you know, it's exciting to see that they're excelling and I know, I know now, and, and I've got to say that um, the programs that he's been involved in um, through CTE are huge and, and instrumental in his future. This is the whole soccer team. So we have the JV and the, the varsity and the JV team. Yeah, and, and Steven participated on, oh, I see him. Yeah, he's right there. This is a pretty special poster for us. It's been a really long journey for Steven, and this proves to me that people really care. Steven didn't have to come home and tell me, Mom, I made it. This is what people calling me and saying we want to we want people to know your story and printing it and him join um, him making the team is is all I needed I didn't need words I'm Patrick Royal's dad and uh, Patrick grew up when he grew up I was in the military so Patrick was in 10 schools before he enrolled here at South Medford. When he came to enroll uh, in classes his senior year, his counselor uh, knew what he wanted and encouraged him to enroll in the Champs Leadership Program. He did that and he was thrilled. That was a game changer for him, really. And then also Jefferson really um, reaches out to Alejandro for, he's go waiting for a kidney transplant and his school is so involved, really feels like we're at home. <laughs> My son is the third generation to go to Oak Grove. The teachers are great. They, they really are. When the teachers have a strong support staff, it's going to trickle down definitely to the, to the kids. We're excited to see our children get molded by such great staff. And, you know, we can do what we can at school or at home as parents, but when we send them to school with you guys, that you um, continue molding them into being good uh, citizens and, and students, and pretty soon he'll be an adult. Steven has a place, and now I can, I feel like I can just kind of relax and, and know that everything's going to be okay. Believe me, sometimes you cannot uh, say enough words to say thank you because they put more time than what you think. Not only the teachers, the counselors, the, uh, the registrar, the, the people that get the kids enrolled and get them moving. Obviously, it goes all the way up through the administration to the principal and, and to the superintendent. Thank you all. Thank you from the bottom of my heart as a parent that you're raising such wonderful children because it makes a huge difference in their lives and in our lives. And I hope that you have a successful year and I hope that you find kindness in every one of your days too. I want to give a big, big, big thank you to the school staff and know that what you do and the positive things you do um, goes a long way. I really do, I think it does.